Hi guys, uh, welcome to Binary Beast. Uh, <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video, but I was slightly busy in my externals uh, and also I was finding some internships uh, for my last semester. So luckily uh, I found an internship, but uh, the thing which I have observed in all these interviews was that every company was focusing majorly on the dynamic programming part. Okay, which I lacked by the way, still I was selected. So I so I thought that why not just make a series on dynamic programming so that you all can also get an advantage of it. Yeah, so that makes sense, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, now I'm free for some time. So I think I will be uploading more and more videos frequently. So for starters, I have chosen hacker rank preparation, interview preparation kit in that we will be starting with the dynamic programming part. Okay, so yeah. Let's see. Okay, so in the first, I've already solved the maximum sum array. We'll be starting from it. This is quite a like a basic level dynamic programming question. So for all those who are very much experienced or uh, you know have some intermediate programming skills, I recommend that you watch it in a 2x or you know uh, in a faster speed because it will be very easy for you guys to grasp compared to the beginners. Okay, I don't know the net is working or something. Yeah, it's working. Okay, so uh, let's start with the okay. So let's start with the quotes. Okay, so I have selected the maximum array problem. So let's uh, and by the way, I'm recording this video third time because in the first uh, couple of times, like I was not able to find a bug because it was you know uh, uh, disturbing the audio. So I'm working very hard for the quality. You know, <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, so let's start with it. Uh, I have chosen the maximum array sum. Now, what the question is that. We have been given a uh, array that is minus 2, 1, 3, minus 4 and 5. Okay. Now our task is to find the maximum summation of subset. Okay. Uh, in such a way so that the elements are not adjacent to each other. Okay. So by the like let me just explain you by the example and you I think you will grasp it. You all are smart. Okay. So let's see. So it's minus 2. Okay. Now if I select minus 2, I cannot select 1 because it's an adjacent 1. Adjacent one means that the element should not be after it or it should be not just above it. Okay, it should be uh, Like it should be Not it should not at a distance of one. It should be ahead of it. Okay, so let's see So it's minus two so we cannot take one but we cannot we, we can take three minus four and five So let's say for minus two we have chosen three so it's minus two plus three it is one and now I've selected one So I cannot take one I cannot take minus four so minus 2 then 3 and then I take 5 so it's 5 plus 3 8 8 minus 2 6 so I got my first summation as 6 now let's select 1 so for 1 I cannot choose minus 3 or uh, I, I cannot choose minus 2 or 3 so let's see after 1 we chose minus 4 so 1 minus 4 is minus 3 and minus 3 and we cannot go further because 5 is adjacent to 4 so we cannot change so we cannot take anything right so it's uh, 1 and minus 4 which is minus 3 which is uh, less than 6 so I'm not considering it but what about we but what if we take 3 and if we take 3 then we cannot take 1 and we cannot we cannot take minus 4 but we can take any element apart from this so let's say I have chosen 3 and 5 because they are not adjacent and I can take it so it's 3 plus 5 is equal to 8 and I got it so that's the answer 8 okay but is this approach right because uh, from what I can tell is that the constraints are uh, pretty much vast because just have a look at the constraints it's from minus 10 raised to 4 to plus 10 raised to 4 so if we try through this brute force then we cannot reach an optimal solution because just for 2 I have so many alternatives for 2 I can go with 3 for 2 I can go with 4 for 2 I can go with 5 then for 2 I can again go with 3 and minus 4 then I can go with minus 2 and then I again go with 3 and 5 and then it's just minus 2 then for 1 I have again a hell lot of options so this method is definitely not the right approach so let's move on to a more practical and a more dynamic approach okay so now why the word dynamic because dynamic programming basically means to store my past calculations so that I can use it in my further calculations and that's why we name it as dynamic programming so just to figure out this solution it literally took me 30 minutes but uh, I think that I, I don't know I'm good in it I'm bad in it but I know that I have done it okay so that should be the motive for you guys as well uh, I am starting the solution if you already have figured it out then please watch it 
But if you, if you have not figured it out, then pause this video and wait for some time. Just brainstorm and try to find this, find that one solution. Even if that is wrong, it does not matter. Just find it. Okay, so now I'm starting the solution. Okay, what I will be trying to do is, I, there are, I, will, I will be doing two arrays. The one of array, that will be given by user. And another one will be my answer array. I will just properly format it. Okay. So now it's minus 2, 1, 3, minus 4 and 5. And what I'll be trying to do here is that the first two elements will be static. That is, if here minus 2, I will also take minus 2. If here 1, then I will also take maximum of the 0th element and the first element, which is maximum of 0, minus 2 and 1, which is 1. Now, from here is where our programming starts. Okay, now how does our programming start? So let's see. Now, I have three possible options. Either I will take three, that is the number itself, or I will take the number preceding it in the answer array. So either I will take three, or I will take three minus three and the number which is just above it, which is one, but not one. This is not the one which I am talking about. This is the one which I am talking about. So either it is maximum of three, that is the number itself or the number preceding it but from the answer array that is 1 or the summation of 3 plus number which is before the previous that is 3 minus 1 which is sorry minus 9 3, mi 3 number preceding it is 1 and again preceding it is minus 2 but not this minus 2 I am talking about this minus 2 ok so 3 minus 2 which is uh, 1 yeah? so the maximum of this 3 is 3 so I am taking 3 same goes here Either the number itself that is uh, uh, minus 4 or the number which is just ahead of it but not here. I am talking about here. So 3 or the summation of this element and 1, 2 but not this. I am talking about this. So 1 plus 1 minus 4 which is minus 3. Okay. So 3 seems a nice option. So I am taking 3 here as well. Okay, okay, nice. Now I have 5. Okay, so either it is 5 or the number which is just ahead of it but not here. I am talking about here. So it's 3 or it's summation of 5 or 1, 2 but not 2. It's this. So it is 3 plus 5 which is 8. Okay, so which is the max? 8 is the max. So I am taking 8. And 8 is my final answer. We just got the one answer in big O N approach. And that's what we want. And that's what DP is. Okay. So this was the basic solution. Now let's just put it. And it, the code will be in minutes. Trust me. This was the code which I have written the, in a, my second attempt. But as you, I just told, I have recorded this video thrice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now let's, let's just start it. Boom, boom, boom. Int main, I am taking a long int and then user will just get a number long int ARRN and just you know this is a basic stuff. I know that you might be you know aware of it. Long int i is equal to zero, i is less than n i plus plus ARR of i. Cool. I have taken the input from the user. Now, as I just told here, I will be maintaining one more array of the answer. Let's just take it. Long int answer of n. And as I just told here, the first two elements will be static one. So let's just do it here as well. Answer of 0 will be my first one. That is ARR of 0. And my answer of 1 will be maximum of ARR of 0 or ARR of 1. Now just remember one thing that is in competitive programming you do not need to you know define all the trivial function there is always the already predefined function you you have to you don't have to waste any time so I already got the maximum value now let's just start with the second element wherever actual code was okay so now answer of i is maximum of now as i told i have three options either the number that is that means arr of i or the number which is just ahead of it but not the number i'm talking about the answer one so answer of i minus one or
or it is actually uh, the summation. I don't know the video recording had just stopped. Okay, I have not done anything. So it was just the summation of the two elements. That is the number itself and the number which is just two above it. Okay. Okay. So what I just told was that, as I just uh, told here as well, it would be summation of this element plus one and two, and not this, but this one. Okay. So what I'm writing here is that it's basically a r r i, which is my the element this, or my answer of i minus two. That's it. This one line of code was the whole code, and it literally took me 30 minutes to figure this out. And my answer is obviously the last element in the array. And let's just fingers crossed and hope there is no error. And there is an error, and it's a very complex error. So let's see what was the error. Uh, long end, long end, long end. Okay, I don't know. Long end. Okay, I don't know why the bracket is here. Oh no no no. Okay okay now I get it. See. As I just told, maximum is the function which is not defined by us. It's a predefined function. Okay, it only takes two argument. So remember one thing: that this is my first argument, and this is my whole second argument. So I need to just use a nested max. This is just a complex name. It's quite simple. Trust me. I have to use the max, and again here max. Now what it does is that first it finds a maximum from this two, and whichever value we have got, and then we use maximum to find this one. Pretty simple. No error, no error. Please, no error. There we go. <laughs> so let's just uh, run this code and see if we are getting eight or not because eight is the right answer, I think. Okay, five. And there I go. Eight. Two. Let's just try and run this code on hacker rank the third time, by the way. <laughs> okay, let's just run it and see whether we are not getting or getting or not. So run. Okay, we have passed the sample case. Now let's just submit it to see that uh, we have passed every test case or not. Okay, it's nice to see all the green colors. And there you go. So we have successfully uh, completed this code. Uh, this was the first code in our series. Uh, we will be trying to solve many more. So please support me and have a great day. Bye.